Hey there, math and science students. Welcome back to your classroom. It's a very quiet classroom again today, but I uh, hope you're doing okay with the homework. Uh, we're shooting for, of course, giving this uh, that, oh, two, three hours of work each day. I try and meter it out over the course of the week. I put that on the note home today. So I'll put the videos out and the workout in such a way that hopefully you're not loading up too much on one day. Remember, if it takes more than, um, say, an hour on the math, in a particular night, take a break, okay? It's supposed to be um, you know, manageable and it's also supposed to not be stressful during this time of distance learning. So I hope it's going okay for you at home. Miss having you guys here in class. I gotta tell you, it's really weird coming back to an empty classroom and doing notes on the board like this, but I do hope they help you out with some of the clarifications. So let's jump right in. If you check out where we are in chapter six, we're doing a little bit with exponents and rules on exponents and also a little bit on factoring. Uh, I put up here first the rules. If you look at the rules, yeah, they're on the board behind me. And if you look at all the symbols that are up there, if they seem a little bit confusing at first, don't sweat it. Uh, I want to give you a practical example of how to do a couple of these. Also, if you look at the rules, we've seen those before. We've had those written down at some point over the year in our notes, I know that. And the rules right here are using, like we've done in algebra, it's symbols to represent uh, numbers. So if you check out A and A, they represent any number. Now, the important thing to remember when you see this rule written out like this is because they're using the same letter, A here and A here, it could have been any number. I could have used an X or a Y or something like that. But if you check out the A here and the A here, um, that means that whatever number that is, um, they've got to be the same. You can't have like a five and then a seven over here. That's important in algebra. If you're using the same letter, or variable. Remember that from the other day we talked about terms and variables and expressions. If you're using the same letter, it represents the same value. If you look right here, you have a to some power m multiplied by a to some other power n. You, well, you add the powers up right here. Let's give a practical example of that. Um, let's say your age. Let's say you're 12 years old. And we're going to put a 12 over here. Now, as you probably know, any whole number you can put to the first power, it means the same thing. So 12 written by itself, yeah, it just means, hey, you're 12 years old. But if you put 12 to the first, if you really want to impress your friends on the next time you put out uh, an invitation or something, say, well, 12 to the first power is old. You can say, hey, 12 to the first means the same thing as 12. Um, we don't always write the exponent there, of course, because there's no need to. But when you're looking at something like, say, 12, say to the third power. If you look at the rules in the book, if you look at the rules that are in the notes online, that means 12 times 12 times 12. If we are expressing it as an exponent right here, and we apply this rule, you'll notice that the bases here, the letters on the bottom, the A's, the 12's, they're the same number, so we can do this, we can use this rule. This is a 12, and this was a 13, hey, we couldn't use that rule, it wouldn't work. But since the bases, the numbers here are the same, there's a 12 here and a 12 here, we can use this rule. In other words, 12 to the first power multiplied by 12 to the third power, well, let's use our rule. Let's say, okay, our 12 is represented by the A, or the A represents the 12, however you want to say that, equals same base, but now we're just adding the exponents, M plus N, and notice, M and N, different letters, represent different numbers. In this case right here, we have a one and a three. So one plus three equals 12 to the fourth power. In other words, if you take the rule and you plug in, and the book uses this term all the time, that you, you plug in or substitute real numbers, you can just apply the rule so long as you're remembering that the A's, in this case I use the letter A uh, because of what the book uses, um, the A's represent the same value. Here with uh, factoring a to the m divided by a to the n, again, if we were doing something like this, let's, let's put uh, 12 to the fifth. 12 to the fifth divided by 12, say, to the third power. Um, I'm gonna show you a slightly different way to think about this one, just to mix it up a little bit. Um, again, doing it, I'm gonna say 12 to the five minus three power, 12 to the second power. Another way that you can maybe visualize it that helps out, I know it helped me um, when I was a student first learning about exponents, was a teacher wrote it on the board something like this. Uh, she actually wrote out and she expanded what we call the exponents. 12 to the fifth, what does that mean? Well, it means 12 times 12 times 12 times 12 times 12. 
there are five twelves multiplied together. Um, if you look down here on the bottom, hey, three twelves multiplied are the product of three twelves. Twelve times twelve times twelve. Uh, let me see if I have a different color pen here that might help out visualize this just a little bit. But remember, when you have the same value on the top, if a fraction is on the bottom, we can do a little bit of canceling. We do that cross canceling all the time with science. There's a lot of science tie-ins here. I'll show you another science tie-in here in just a second. Um, in other words, yeah, I can get rid of those and get rid of those and get rid of those. Like a game of elimination. What am I left with? 12 to the second power. Just another way of seeing it, another way of visualizing it. It means the same thing. This one right here, there's a little asterisk next to it just to remind me. It's really there for completeness. Um, this doesn't really come up anywhere in unit six, but it's just for completeness. When you see an exponent on a, on a number, um, again, raised to another power, uh, it means that you're multiplying the powers. A to the M to the N power, A to the M times N. I won't spend too much time on that. We don't really see that in this unit, although we do come across it a little bit later in science. Um, but when we come across it later on, we'll spend a little bit more time with it. A quick example, if you look at some of the things that we've done in science class, this is the example I used in class, I want to put it up here again just to remind us of it. If you look at, say, the number of stars in an average galaxy, somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 billion stars. If you're looking at the number of galaxies in the observable universe, you're looking at something like 200 billion galaxies. Now this might be off by a factor of 10, but it's in the ballpark, it's in the neighborhood. I use a baseball idiom in the ballpark. If you were to multiply these numbers, say a teacher, or say you wanted to know for yourself, somebody asked you, hey, how many stars are in the observable universe? Well, it'd be 200 billion multiplied by 200 billion. I'm not gonna spend the time right now to write out 22 zeros on the board. I think I did spend the time in class to, to make the point that's how many stars are in our galaxy, or in our universe. But when you're using exponents, hey, we can use the rules of exponents that we're learning in this unit to express this product as 4.0 times 10 to the 22nd power. That's just another way of saying uh, it's a four with 22 zeros after it. And you'll notice because we're using the base 10, we call that, it's much easier to deal with very, very big numbers. And as we'll see, very, very small numbers. In other words, when you have a lot of uh, zeros after a decimal point, um, you have exponents as a wonderful tool in science to work with those big numbers and, big, and very, very small numbers. Um, last little thing that we're getting here, remember the distributive property. We talked about the distributive property already several times. Um, looks a little bit like this. If you have six multiplied by uh, a plus b, by the quantity a plus b, I think the example I gave in class and, and is if you think about distributive properties, distributing something. For example, if everyone comes up to you because you have a pack of gum or you've got some candy and they say, hey, okay, everyone wants them, they crowd around you. The distributive property is a way of multiplying in such a way so that you know that you've given the exact same amount to everybody. Well, in this case right here, we wanna make sure that we multiply all the elements here by all the elements with, within the parentheses. In other words, it was like saying, okay, everybody line up and then I'll give you each one piece of candy. Same thing here. I want to multiply six time, times multiply by the quantity a plus b. Well, we take turns. We say first six multiplied by a, then six multiplied by b. It looks a little bit like this, six a plus six b. These are equivalent expressions. Factoring, you'll often, and coming up in this unit, you'll be asked to factor. You're going the other direction with it. You might be given this instead. 6a plus 6b. You're looking for something common that you can pull out of that, of that expression. I look at the expression, oh, this term has a six in it, this term has a six in it, I can pull that out. In other words, I'll use an arrow right here because it's not really an equation. Going the other direction, um, I'm taking the six out of it, a plus b. So factoring and distributive property, they kind of go opposite of each other. You can see that you're taking an expression and you're simplifying it. So quick recap, we went through the rules of exponents. I know the rules and they're stated in your book. They're also stated in my notes online. That looks a little bit like gobbledygook at first with all those letters and, and exponents on them. But when you actually apply it to some real numbers, it makes it much, much easier. That's why I ask the students, remember when you're defining math terms, 
Always put examples in. The examples usually make it much, much easier. Where do we use um, exponents? Very often in scientific notation, we use them for expressing very, very large quantities and very, very small quantities too. And then finally, distributive property and factoring, they sort of go opposite of each other. They're sort of like uh, the mirror image of each other. You're gonna be doing a lot of factoring in algebra and it's something to get good practice with. Uh, talk to you later, hope to see you soon in person. Bye-bye.